Everyone's heard the word immunity. Many people know that it's something within us. Some are aware that this is a real army that rushes into the enemy camp with machine guns, tanks, and heavy artillery when our organism is attacked by bacilli and viruses. But how does our immunity work? Today, we will explain it in simple terms. And at the same time, we will tell you what happens when immunity works where it's not needed, what happens if it does not exist, and can science make our immunity so powerful so that it overcomes all diseases? Wipe down the screen, put on a mask and a pair of gloves, and gently pull the bell. Let's go! Immunity, from Latin immunitas, liberation, is the body's defense against genetically foreign organisms and substances. They can be microorganisms, viruses, worms, various proteins, cells, including the body's own modified cells. For example, let's imagine that our body is attacked by a certain accumulation of bacteria, the organized crime group pathogens. A pathogen is a microorganism that can cause disease. In addition to bacteria, they also include viruses, small creatures, even smaller than cells, that are generally incomprehensible whether they are alive or not. So that's it. Inveterate gangsters behave accordingly. They want to infect us with some kind of nasty disease, endlessly multiply, build a casino, and sell drugs. Our bodily oasis of cleanliness is not ready for this. Here, the first line of defense comes to the rescue, the skin. Our natural cover and the largest organ weighs about 10 kilograms and works as a whole complex of defensive structures. Its first layer is a wall of dead cells. Yes, we are essentially walking cemeteries. But of course, it does not frighten the cunning bacteria who want to invade the palaces of our body, and the most daring of them seep inside, where a surprise awaits them in the form of a deep layer of skin. It's cramped in it. The cells are adjoined so tightly that it becomes more difficult to squeeze through than in the Tokyo subway. Great, the enemy shall not pass. But the fact is that there are holes in our body through which we, for example, eat, watch YouTube videos, and defecate in the wrong places. We doubt that for the sake of protecting the body, you are ready to gag your mouth, glue your eyes, and tie your genitals in a knot. That's not a pretty picture. Therefore, bacteria still get inside our body and get on the mucous membrane. This layer of mucus, no matter how unpleasant it may seem, takes up 200 times more area than the skin and makes bacteria get stuck in it right up to the breeches. And the cilia in the lungs and stomach kick the germs right out. Want to know what mucus looks like? Just blow your nose. Unfortunately, mucus will not protect against all bacteria, and the meanest of them nevertheless break through and begin criminal activity. Here, the second line of defense is triggered, the innate immune system. First of all, phagocytes are connected, which have an even cooler name, macrophages. Sounds like some monster name, isn't it? Well, they are like city man-eating patrols. Exactly. At the sight of danger, large, powerful macrophages simply devour the hapless criminal bacteria. In general, macrophages are very smart guys and trigger an alarm signal. They release signaling proteins called cytokines into their surrounding. They enter the bloodstream, and leukocytes migrate to the site of infection from the blood. There are usually a lot of bacteria, and microphages can eat several dozen until they get bored. Therefore, more numerous combat units are needed, and leukocytes are just that. The real special forces come into play. First of all, neutrophils come to the scene of the crime, a type of leukocytes that absorb enemy bacteria but die themselves, like heroes. For glory! When they die, they emit poison that is deadly for bacteria and their own DNA, in which the remaining microbes that have miraculously survived become entangled in a network. Dead neutrophils from tissues destroyed by inflammation and the pyogenic microorganisms that caused the inflammation form a mass known as pus. In general, as you understood, immunity is a real internal army, and it is damn cool. However, not everything in our body is perfect. Some of its parts are long overdue for replacement, because evolution wasted them a little. We talked about this in the video in the pop-up above.
But how does the body know which cells are enemy and which are not? You wouldn't hit in the face everyone you meet, although you really want to. This is where the adaptive immune system comes in, which is much slower and more complex. Here, a phagocyte patrols our body and comes into contact with various bacteria. Some are useful and necessary, but some must be destroyed. It turns out that phagocytes and bacteria are actively involved in the arms race. Phagocytes seek to grow receptors that recognize molecules that are critical and specific to harmful bacteria. Bacteria, in turn, seek to get rid of these specific molecules and replace them with something else, so that the receptors stop working. For example, a phagocyte can successfully recognize mannose, which is found in many bacteria. As it turns out, it is not so easy for bacteria to get rid of this membrane component, and the phagocyte will successfully destroy this bacterium. Beneficial bacteria do not have such a membrane component. Okay, there are receptors on the outside, and it's pretty simple. But how to recognize a pathogen that has seeped into the cell and does its dark deeds there under the cover of the cell membrane? The process works like this. There are things inside the cell that constantly break everything that comes their way into small pieces. The cell exposes these small pieces to all interested parties through a special complex of protein molecules, MHC, Major Histocompatibility Complex. Interested parties, such as a T-killer, look at these pieces for antigens, any substances the body considers foreign. If the antigen matches the receptor, then it immediately becomes clear that something bad is happening inside the cell. Well, if it does not match, then the cell is considered healthy. The cells of the immune system, the macrophages for example, tear off pieces of the evil pathogen and travel to the lymph nodes, where they meet with T lymphocytes. When they meet, they say, look what I got. T lymphocytes see that the pathogen lump is not a native part of the body and turn into one of two types either T-killers, who, as you might guess, know how to kill, or into T-helpers, which activate B-lymphocytes. B-lymphocytes are capable of producing huge amounts of antibodies, and these same antibodies are delivered to the site of infection and very much help other cells of the immune system to detect and destroy pathogens. The process of antibody production is not very fast, the concentration reaches a peak in 10 to 15 days. By the way, do you know why we have no immunity, for example, from SARS? Let's check how knowledgeable you are. Pause the video and write in the comments. You didn't? Yeah, sure, I can wait while you're writing. Alright, let's go on. So, why are we not immune to SARS? In fact, we are, it's just that these viruses mutate very quickly, so B lymphocytes remembering the virus are completely useless. The body has to restart the process when it comes into contact with a new subspecies of the virus. But we rarely get sick twice with the same specific subspecies of the virus, precisely because of the B lymphocytes with the correct antibodies. To get sick with the flu twice a winter would be too much. But there is one problem here. The variety of antibodies produced within a human body is enormous, about 100 million species, so our body, in principle, can cope with most pathogens. If, due to mutation, the diversity decreases by at least an order of magnitude, it all goes very bad for the person. David Vedder lived a short, bright in its own way, but essentially an endlessly tragic life. The first son of David's parents died at the age of seven months. Death occurred due to dysfunction of the thymus, a gland in which maturation, immunological training of those very T cells of the immune system occurs. Interesting fact, the thymus is located in the upper chest and consists of two lobes that join at the front of the trachea. It looks like a small copy of the lungs. The gland grows until puberty, reaching a weight of 30 to 40 grams, and then gradually decreases. In fact, after 25 years of age, the thymus becomes useless. So, on occasion, you can cut it out and keep it as a souvenir. The cause of this dysfunction was Severe Combined Immunodeficiency Syndrome SCI. Each subsequent child had a 50% chance of inheriting this syndrome. 
Doctors suggested placing the child in a sterile isolator immediately after birth in order to perform a bone marrow transplant after a while. The daughter of the vetters, Katrina, was supposed to be the donor. A sterile cocoon was prepared where David was placed 10 seconds after birth. At the same time, David was baptized with sterilized holy water. However, after David's birth, it was discovered that Katrina was not a compatible donor and a bone marrow transplant was not possible. The bubble, conceived as a temporary solution, became his home. David grew up, and soon it became necessary to equip an entire hospital room for him and for the bubble. Water, air, food, clothing, everything went through special processing before entering the bubble. All manipulations were carried out through plastic gloves attached to the walls of the bubble. The U.S. government spent $1.3 million on the project and was going to cut funding. Therefore, the doctors who conceived the experiment nevertheless decided to try to transplant the bone marrow of his sister to David. David, who underwent surgery, felt normal at first, but after a few months he fell ill. The virus in his sister's bone marrow spread through his body at a terrible rate, and the body of a child with no immunity could not resist it in any way. After 15 days, David Vetter died after living in an impenetrable plastic bubble for 12 years. Our immunity needs training. The more pathogens enter our body, the more the immune system learns to resist them. Poor David had no immunity since his birth. But people who live in sterility all their life might get the same problem. They do not develop immunity. So don't forget how important our internal protection is and how important it is to take care of our own life. And wash your hands. Although when we wash our hands, we wash away the bacteria on which the immune system could train. Damn, we're confused. Although it is probably still worth washing. And that's why. Unfortunately, no. Moreover, in some cases, immunity kills us. It's all about antibodies. They are produced by the cells of the immune system to fight off the invader. It would seem that these are just protein molecules. What are they capable of? Antibodies have a main task, to attach to pathogens, this process is called opsonization, and signal the cells of the immune system that, here I am attached to something bad, it can be destroyed. On top of that, bacteria coated with antibodies lose their mobility which makes it easier for phagocytes to hunt for them. Antibodies radically help cells in the immune system to detect and destroy pathogens. Without them, we would all be dead long ago. The problem is that because of them, we can die ourselves. The body cannot produce antibodies quickly enough, and scum viruses seem into our cells by the millions. And when some of them enter the cell, it turns into a living corpse, a zombie. Antibodies that come late immediately detect a threat and rapidly kill our own cells. It turns out that the only way to recover in this case is to divert the antibodies. In Crohn's disease, which affects the intestines, patients are implanted with a live whipworm. Immunity immediately rushes to the worm and leaves the cell alone. Well, it's not. Until recently, AIDS was a fatal disease. It was called the plague of the 20th century. AIDS really equaled death. It is a disease of the immune system caused by the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. With AIDS, a person slowly but surely, over several years, develops total immunodeficiency when the body cannot cope with almost any microbes, even those that never infect a healthy person. Because the immune system fights not only against microbes, but also against cancer cells, even a person with AIDS has a sharp increase in the likelihood of getting cancer. Now, people diagnosed with HIV do not die. They live. However, all their lives they take medications, antiretroviral drugs, strictly according to the clock, go to the doctor without fail, take tests, control their health, and do not complain about how you do to your mother. Thanks to the antiretroviral drugs, HIV infection has gone from a deadly disease to a chronic one. Glory to the doctors, not to God. If HIV infection is detected in time and taken under control, 
then a person's life is practically out of danger. Interesting fact, if all the rules for taking antiretroviral drugs are observed, a healthy child is born to an HIV-infected mother in 99% of cases. Go for it, man! But what happens if immunity is working, but tries too hard? In general, immunity is a wonderful thing and an incredible military strength of our body. But as in any army, sometimes there is friendly fire. Yes, immunity sometimes attacks something that does not need to be attacked. If you miraculously survived the summer flowering and right now avoid all the poplars, this video is for you. In fact, all our videos are for you. We're not the president's press office. Maybe recently you had an allergy to your favorite pistachios, or even to the hair of a cat that has been living with you for 10 years. Summer, heat, everything is blooming and fragrant, cats shedding and rejoicing in the sun, in general, a real nightmare for an allergic person. According to statistics, about 20% of people on the planet suffer from allergies – to pollen, to medicines, to any food. Moreover, every year, scientists observe an increase in the number of allergy sufferers. Among children, their number in developed countries reaches 40%. Allergies are becoming a serious problem that costs governments millions of dollars. The global cause of allergies is the multifunctioning of the immune system. Instead of ignoring harmless pollen or nuts, the immune system decides that they are dangerous and rushes into the attack. Moreover, it immediately launches heavy artillery. With a normal immune response, say when a potentially harmful bacterium enters the body, the body fights it by attracting Class G immunoglobulins IgG. Yeah, like a neighbor's flat TV. They bind with foreign substances that have entered the body and cause a reaction that leads to their destruction. IgGs work on demand. They deal with the enemy on the spot and do not affect the work of the rest of the body. The real cops hit without looking. Scared? We're scared too. Ooh, pathogens, ooh, bacteria, ooh, mad editors. Now, there are practically no technologies that improve immunity directly, but the tried and true rules work. Do not smoke, do not drink, and most importantly, stop eating what you are eating now. Throw the pizza away, it's poisoned with huge belly disease. Although scientists are struggling to find some kind of elixir of protection, science is still very far from real results. So by following these simple tips, you will be like a brain frame screenwriter, handsome, smart, and wearing glasses. Follow me. Because good vision is for those who are not sufficiently immune to science. In the disastrously stupid movie Alien Covenant, Idiot astronauts land on an unknown planet wearing only ear flaps, wander about it like in a park, and inhale, inhale, and inhale. If the alien had not intervened, they would still most likely have died. Because even if the atmosphere of the planet is completely identical to that of the Earth, so many outlandish microorganisms live in it, the crew's immunity would most likely fall to the attack of an armada of tiny unknown enemies. First, it was necessary to send a probe, collect samples, make vaccines. Yes, it would take maybe a year or two, but then the guys would have survived. Do not repeat the mistake of would-be researchers and always take care of your health. Otherwise, the antibodies will take care of it. You don't want to die of a dastardly little virus, therefore try to keep your immunity in good shape. Otherwise, it will keep you in tight-knit gloves. Wear a mask, wash your hands, wash everything. And always remember about safety, because as you can see, even such an impeccable system as our immunity can fail. Brain Frame out!